this video we're going to talk about working with components. I've already done a, vi a video about working with groups and a group is when you triple click something like this everything here can be made a group in which case it becomes a single object and that means that it's easy to simply come and select it and move it as one. If we want to edit the object what we need to do is triple or oh, sorry not triple click just double click you get this wireframe around it everything else goes a little bit shader uh, lighter sorry and you can edit or change it the way you want to okay oh, that's a bad idea but it's not going to hurt me in this case a component works in a similar way but also with a number of differences uh, if I want to turn something into a component so this is the side of a box I am going to select everything by triple clicking is the easiest way I can also use it by dragging. Now I've dragged from right to left, so this got selected over here. If I drag from left to right, well only this gets uh, com uh, selected because it's the only bit that's completely enclosed. So I'm going to select it all like this and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a component. Now there's the first difference. When you made a group, it just got made a group. When you ask it to make a component, it asks you for some information. And the first thing it's going to ask you for is a definition. It's a name. So this is going to be the side of my box. I can type in a description. Um, I don't usually find it's useful, but there are certain instances where it would be. Uh, I don't actually fiddle with any of these um, settings. I've never needed to. We can go in and look further if we wanted to. I simply give it a name and I say create. Now at that point, it looks much like an object does, a group does. It's a single item, and if I want to edit it, it double click it, and you open it up like this, everything else goes gray. So what's the difference? Well, originally I started out, I had drawn two sides, and I was if you watched the video on groups, I went and grouped each one of them separately. With components, you only do a definition of a component once. So even had I not edited this, I would not be able to go back and redefine this as side because it will come out different. Um, in fact, maybe what I have to do is I'm going to explode that group. I'm going to make it a component. And if I made it side, it tells me a component with that name already exists. Do I want to replace the definition? Uh, in most cases, I'm going to say no because that's a bit of a warning for me. But if I wanted to, I would say yes. And look what happens it makes it identical to the one over there. Now, groups don't have that option. And also, these are too small, so I'm going to undo that change. Right, so I still have a component there called side, and I have individual lines there. So if I'm only going to create one instance of a component first, what I need to do is get more of these around. I'm not going to draw it and re uh, redefine it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete that. If I want to get this over here, I need to basically copy it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. I can use my move tool. And when I move it, if I press the control key, it will copy. If I press the control key again, it will go back to move. If I press the control key, it will, I will copy. So that's one way I can do it. I've pressed escape. The other thing I can do is I can copy and I can paste paste one down wherever I want one. That's another way I can do it. The third way I can do it is I can come here to components and you can see that there is a component called side. So if I select on this, I get to drag and place it on my model. And that's really useful if I've created a component or if I have a library of components but it's not yet on my drawing, I can place one into my drawing anytime I want. Most of the time what I find is quickest and you'll see me do is I go and select that and I'll move it across there and create a copy. Um, now if I've got the two sides of components and they are identical and if my front and back were identical as well then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that I'm going to turn that one into a component and I'm going to give it a name front back right, there we go and I'm going to need a copy of it and so I'm going to drag it and I'm going to move it along on green axis and just place it down. And just to complete the matter, uh, what, oops, wrong. I need to turn this into something. Now I could group it. 
I do not use groups as a general rule. I turn everything into a component. So I'm going to right click, make component, and I'm going to turn that into the, the definition of base. So now in my components list here, you can see that I have uh, a base, a front, back, and a side, and they're all copied all there. I actually don't use this components menu very much, this components tray very much. I generally work with what I have on my uh, page in front of me. So now what I can do is I can start putting this box together again. And you saw me in the objects. I'm going to bring this into here. Last time when I had it grouped, all I did was move this up and call this a butt joint. So now what I might choose to do is a more fancy joint, and I might choose to rebate the joint that's here. So I'm just going to bring this box together, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oops. Okay, you can hit escape, or you can get it to highlight, and it will sometimes do this. Ah, oh, that doesn't go there. So that has to go into there, right? So there's my box. But I decide I want to change this joint here. Now I'm going to do a simple joint. I'm going to do a little rebate, and I can. I don't have to pull the box apart to do that. I can simply come. I've opened. I've edited the shape. I can't do this on the outside. I can go from there to midpoint, and I can use my push pull tool, and I can push a rebate. Now look what's happened. It's done it on the other side as well because I have an identical component. Whatever I do to one component happens to the other. Now I have a problem in that this is reversed, but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. This is where the power of components are. When you make a change to one component, that change is put in place for every instance of that component in your drawing, the identical change. So now what I have is I have my front has a rebate joint in it, my back has a rebate joint in it as well. Now there are a couple of ways that I could fix this as well. I could use my rotate tool and I could come over here and I could rotate this round by 180 degrees and then I could use my move tool and I can move this into place. Um, technically that should be there because I needed to line up with the bottom of the base here. All right, and I still need to move my sides out. Now that's one way. It's not the best way. So I'm going to use Control Z to undo those three moves. The better way of doing it is to right click on this uh, component here. And you'll notice that the three axes I have here, I have the green, I have the red, and I have the blue. And down here at the bottom, I have this option called flip along. Well, what I want to do is I want to mirror it basically around the green axis. So if I say components green, it looks right. And what this has done is it's mirrored the object around this green axis here. So now I have a box. I have rebate joints both front and back. And I have my sides here, and my sides are too short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click into there, I'm going to use my push pull tool, I'm going to push that surface to line up with that edge over there, I'm going to rotate this around here, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull it to line up with that edge over there outside the box, outside the component, and there I have a box. And that works pretty well. And that's the basic idea of a component. Uh, it edits much the same as an object as I said before, so if I wanted to do something onto it, I could not, if I wanted to put a little change onto here, I could not come and draw onto there and then try push-pull and change that. This is actually a separate shape, a separate object, as you can see when I move it out. So to edit it, you've got to double click um, to make those changes. Changes get made in all the components, and the other difference is that a component gets named, and so you have access to it from a list. All right, so when do you use
components and when do you use groups. I'm going to make a small addition to the box and then I'll show you when you use which. Just hold on. Right, so what I've done is I've gone and added a lid to the box. And that's nice, I can look at the box from the outside, but I cannot see what's inside at all. And so I might want to open the lid. Now to do that, I can take this uh, top and I can move it away. And yes, I can see that. But sometimes what I want to see is how the lid moves as a whole object. Now I can come here, I can hold down my shift key and I can select this and I can select this, and I can select this and I can select this. So all of the components that form part of the lid are selected and so I can either move it or I can get more ambitious and I can test its rotation and I can do this. Okay, so we open it 90 degrees. That's very useful but it's a bit of a nuisance to have to go and select each of those five components every time. And so this is the one place where I do use groups. So I make that a single group. Now I come and select there is one single group if I want to rotate it, I come back here, I click on there, I click on there, and I do this. Alright, I come back here, one single click, I've got all of those components selected. The thing is, what happens if I want to edit these components now? Well, first, I have to double click to be editing the group. Then, if I wanted to um, edit this particular lid, I have to double click, and I can go in and edit the lid as well. So, it is a little more involved to go and make changes once you have grouped components but that is a very useful thing to be able to do is to group com components that's about the only time I really like to use groups I create groups I create components as a matter of course every single object that I'm doing in a woodwork project every single piece of wood it makes sense to me to call it a component and then I will group these components into some sort of part like the lid or the base and you'll see in this case I have not grouped the base. Uh, that is most of what you're going to need to know for components. I'm going to show you something a little bit different before we go on to or when we talk about layers because there are some catches about how and when you draw the components um, and that has to do with use of layers but otherwise what we have is we have each single piece of wood here I have called a component there is one definition of a component even though there are two instances of the same component in this case front and back these are identical um, and it's worth actually showing I have come back to my useful tray and I've shown my entity information and when I click on it I can see the definition so here I can see that this is a group but when I click on this and then I click on there, you can see I've called that the lid front back and this one the lid side. So you can see information about the entity information about which group you're working with. And this is a very useful tool to use. It allows you to manipulate the pieces individually. It allows you, however, to have copies and to have changes transmitted immediately throughout your drawing whenever you make one copy to one part. It does mean that if you want a difference to the part, you need to change things. So if I want to put some sort of handle on here or something on there to open this, I might have to, and I'll show you, I have my components here, I can explode it, but I can also make it unique. And what happens is I get front back part one. So I'm gonna, just going to make that front. While I'm at it, I may as well come here. This is no longer front back, so I may as well change its name to back. All right, and that allows me to edit this, and I might go and put a little piece in here that says I'm just going to do something here, and I'm going to make a cutout so that when I close my lid, all right, by rotating it, Alright, I have a little place for my fingers to go in. Now that appears only on the front, it does not appear on the back, and that's because what I did is I took those two identical components, I made them unique, and I changed just the front. Okay, so that's components, different to objects, 
but there are, is a use for uh, different groups. Sorry, there is a use for groups with components, but I tend not to use groups on their own. Next, we're going to need to talk about layers. So let's move on to that. Next video. I'll see you then.